This video was brought to you by Brilliant. Following the resignation of Prime Minister Mario Draghi and the accompanying collapse of the Italian government, the stage is now set for a new round of elections, due on the 25th of September. And while election day is still quite some way away, talk has already turned to who might replace Draghi and whether this hypothetical successor will be able to govern effectively in a legislature that's always so divided. So in this video, we thought we'd take a look at the party leading the polls right now, the Brothers of Italy, and more specifically, their leader, who might well end up becoming the next Prime Minister of Italy. If you like our videos, then be sure to subscribe to get more from us and help us get to half a million. Now, we've actually covered the Brothers of Italy in the past, about a year ago, but quite a lot has changed in the time since then. Back then, the polls pointed towards a tight three-way race between the Brothers of Italy, the centre-left Democratic Party, and Matteo Salvini's League Party, with them all polling at about 20% at the time. Right now, though, that's just no longer the case. The Brothers of Italy are consistently polling in first place, with the most recent set of polls putting their support at 24%. Now, second place, Enrico Letta's Democratic Party are on 23%, so they're not that far behind. But the party who were once neck and neck with them, League, are now way down in third place, with just 13% support. And at the same time, the formerly very popular Five Star Movement has also seen their support collapse too. So it certainly seems that the Brothers of Italy are onto something. Now, the party is currently led by Giorgia Maloney, a former Minister of Youth who served in Silvio Berlusconi's government way back in 2008. She was originally a member of the National Alliance, a socially conservative but economically centrist party, who ended up merging with Berlusconi's Forza Italia party in 2009, in order to form the People of Freedom Party. Having established her own political profile, Maloney split from the People of Freedom Party over Berlusconi's proposed support for the appointment of technocrat Mario Monti in the 2013 elections. And the very next year, she set up her own party, the Brothers of Italy Party. And this party is very similar to the National Alliance Party that Maloney was originally part of, and is often described as the contemporary heir of the Italian social movement, itself a descendant of Mussolini's fascist party. Although it's worth saying that despite clearly being related, these parties are not identical. In fact, the National Alliance made a point of moderating itself away from its fascist origins. Anyway, the party is perhaps best described as a right-leaning populist outfit, but most important today is the fact that they were the only major political party not to join with Mario Draghi's government. But before we get to that, let's rewind a little. And that's because the party hasn't always been a raging success. The 2013 Italian general election saw the party get just 2% of the vote and just 9 seats in the Chamber of Deputies. In the European Parliament elections the subsequent year, they won just 3.7%, landing a grand total of 0 seats. However, Fortunes began to turn as we headed into 2016, when Maloney ran for the mayor of Rome, backed by Matteo Salvini. And while she didn't win, she did garner 20.62% of the vote. Then, in the 2018 general election, the Brothers of Italy won 4.4% of the vote, and 32 seats in the Chamber of Deputies, up 25 from 2013. Regardless, though, despite these increases in popularity, as recently as 2018, the Brothers of Italy were only a minor party, fighting for a fraction of the vote on the Italian right. However, since the 2018 general election, the Brothers of Italy have seen a meteoric rise in popularity. Current opinion polling puts them confidently in the lead, with more than 20% support. And with them backed by the likes of Matteo Salvini's League and Silvio Berlusconi's Forza Italia, all of them together comprise a clear majority of support. 
Now, a large part of this recent success is down to the fact that they were the only major party not to sign up to Draghi's coalition, and as such, they became the official opposition to the government. This profile allowed them to dominate the political airwaves and capitalize on the government's less popular policies, while their right-leaning rivals, like Salvini's League, have to instead bite their tongue and toe the government line. So, given that they're on track to become the largest party in Italian politics in the next general election, what does their policy platform actually look like? Well, the Brothers of Italy have some quite controversial policies to say the least. One of the most controversial came out of their party conference in May, where they backed detaining immigrants in designated areas until they've proven their asylum cases, as well as a naval blockade and fines for NGO rescue vessels. Beyond just the controversial stuff though, the Brothers of Italy plan to campaign on a platform of Italy and the Italian people first, with more family-friendly benefits, less European bureaucracy, lower taxes, and a halt to immigration. Maloney originally even wanted to renegotiate EU treaties, and Italy's very membership in the Euro. But that position has somewhat mellowed recently for a simple reason. Money. And it's money, together with the direction of this election, that's going to be causing the biggest headache for Europe. That's because Italy is on the brink of receiving a substantial tranche of its share of the next generation EU funding, i.e. the EU's post-Covid recovery fund. All in all, Italy is by far the largest beneficiary of EU funding. In fact, out of the 750 billion euros available under the EU's recovery and resilience facility, Italy is expected to receive 191.5 billion euros, just under a quarter of the entire EU allocation. The problem here being that the money isn't exactly without conditions. Each member state, Italy included, has been required to submit National Recovery and Resilience Plans, or NRRPs. These documents set out plans for investment and reforms based on the money, with clear milestones and targets. Then, once the NRRPs are submitted, the European Commission assesses the plans before the Council votes on them. If all give the green light, then the country receives their kickstart payment of 13% of their total allocation. Then any further payments are wholly conditional on the countries meeting their agreed milestones and targets. Mario Draghi, the country's former leader, was widely respected on the European and international stage. As the former ECB president, Draghi was meant to provide a safe and stable pair of hands during the worst of the aftermath of the pandemic. However, immediately after the Five Star Movement announced that they wouldn't back Draghi in a no-confidence vote, Italian bond yields rose sharply, increasing borrowing costs for the country. That's because the Brothers of Italy have already come out to criticise Italy's NRRP, and said that the targets contained within the plan ought to be adjusted. In fact, a party official told Reuters that we don't want to throw away the current plan, but make it more efficient and suitable to ensure structural growth. With this disagreement already clear, it's possible that the incoming Italian government could see serious disputes with the EU, and if they fail to meet their targets, as set up by Draghi, Italy could suddenly find itself with a lot less money coming in than they once thought. That's not the only cause for concern either. As some media coverage has highlighted, Italy's new government is currently set to be sworn into office around the 100-year anniversary of Mussolini's March on Rome, something that critics will argue could embolden the fascists within the party to celebrate. In any case, though, it looks like we might be heading towards a Brothers of Italy-led government, because the Brothers of Italy, Forza Italia, and League parties agreed that whoever gets the biggest share of the vote will get the top job. A job that, on the current figures, is Maloney's for the taking. Anyway, looking at the political situation in Italy, and Europe more generally, you might start to believe that the decisions made by countries and leaders 
are at random and without any real purpose. However, if you'd like to be more logical in your decision making, then you should check out my favorite course on Brilliant. Their logical thinking course might start simple, but it builds, teaching you logical reasoning skills until you're solving problems which previously looked impossible. And you'll get used to that empowering feeling of learning, because Brilliant's not just about memorization and lectures. Brilliant teaches you by doing, using active learning techniques to teach you the principles behind otherwise complex subjects, and ensuring that you actually understand what's going on. Using this teaching methodology, you can learn about all kinds of STEM topics. That's algebra, applied probability, calculus, gravitational physics, and even cryptocurrency. In fact, they even have a new course from Kurzgesagt, which I have to say, I found very personally exciting and spent a lot of time playing with. Anyway, if you want to learn in a more fun way, then you should sign up to Brilliant. And the link in the description will get you 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is not only a great deal, but also supports the channel. So thank you.